Hey, welcome back. So this is a big episode. This is actually my 52nd video, meaning that for one solid year, I put out a video every single week, which was my goal 52 episodes ago. Um, I made the goal for just to see if I could stick to it. No one was waiting for them like I've covered in other videos, except for maybe my mom and a few friends. Uh, but I've now done 52. So what's going to happen is I'm going to stop doing them on a weekly basis. And I'll probably do them just from time to time as I feel like it because it's honestly a ton of work and uh, not super enjoyable to do them at the rate that I've been doing them for the past year. Um, so since it's the last episode of this 52 episode season, year, um, I'm going to do a really great recipe that I love to do. It's a, somewhat involved. It's a little bit intimidating to people, but it's, it shouldn't be. It's braised short ribs. Um, and the, the process that I'm going to do is uh, what Tom Colicchio does of Kraft Steak, Kraft New York, Top Chef, Tom Colicchio. Uh, and what that is, is after I sear the meat and, and kind of cook off some of the vegetables, um, I'm using short ribs for this, braised short ribs, obviously. Uh, we're going to deglaze with some red wine and then pour that over the short ribs and let them marinate in that red wine deglaze mixture, mixture overnight. Um, so that's like 24 hours in advance. You can do it a few days in advance. Um, it's not a crucial step, although it really, really enhances the deepness of the end result. So I've done this many times where you don't do that. Um, and you can just put them straight from that step into the oven and braise them off. Still amazing. Uh, but doing it a day ahead of time and letting them marinate really is is next level so um so really other than that it's not that big of a deal but it is like a whole day ahead of time prep which makes it seem like a, a big deal so anyways check it out i hope you like it this is one of my favorite dishes it's really really um just amazingly rich and the meat just pulls apart and people really love it every time i make it i think i'm gonna roast off some some mushrooms as well um, to serve along with it and maybe a bed of mashed potatoes. Let's do it. All right, first things first, I've got my short ribs. I'm using bone-in English cut short ribs. So that means they're cut along the bone. The other way you can get them is called flanken. And that's like if you envision all of the short ribs as a, a big set of ribs, you actually cut, you know, perpendicular and they're thin strips. A lot of uh, like Korean barbecue uses flanken cut. So, do um, English cut, and you can do them bone in or bone out, uh, or boneless, I guess. Um, I like the bone because it kind of just makes a uh, deeper broth. Um, you're almost making a bone broth in the, the braise as it's cooking, so a little deeper flavor, but you do pay for the weight of the bone. Um, so I don't know, maybe a little bit less bang for your buck there, but. Um, I've got a pot heating up very hot right now. I'm only doing a pretty s small amount. Um, so you want to season these really heavily with salt. Um, they're big pieces of meat and it's going to take a while for the salt to penetrate them. So it's best to salt them uh, 15, 20 minutes, an hour ahead of time. Um, but use more salt than you think because it's gonna take a lot to get penetrated. I'm gonna also hit these with some fresh cracked pepper. So what this step does is we're going to brown all sides of the short ribs. We're gonna cook them on high heat, get a really heavy, good sear on all sides um, and develop a good amount of fond on the bottom of the pot. So let's do it. You don't want to overcrowd the pan. So if I was doing any more than this amount, I would do these in batches. Uh, if you overcrowd it, they will steam and they will not brown. Okay, so from here, I've quartered up an onion. I've heavily chopped, not really even chopped, I just sectioned up uh, two carrots two stalks of celery, and about four to six garlic cloves. And we're gonna cook that in here and uh, deglaze the pan with a little bit of white, uh, red wine, not white wine. Okay. 
So after we've sweat these for about five to seven minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and deglaze with a good amount of red wine. And we're gonna bring this to a boil and just let it reduce by about half, making sure that we scrape up the bottom, all the brown bits on the bottom. All right, so this wine has reduced by about half. We've scraped up all of the fond off the bottom. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these back in, meat side down, so the bone facing up, and we're just gonna get them submerged in as much wine as possible. You might have to move around some of the vegetables, put those on top, that's fine. There we go. All right, now from here, I'm gonna let this cool off. Once it's about room temperature, a little bit less, we're gonna put, I'm just gonna put the whole thing in the fridge just like this. For tomorrow, we'll take it out of the fridge. We're gonna add a little bit of beef stock so that it comes up to about the shoulders of the meat. We're gonna bring that up to a boil on the stove and then put a lid on it and throw it in the oven for one and a half to two and a half, three hours, however long it takes to get nice and fall apart. -y. I will see you then. I can't wait. Welcome back. Good morning. It is the next day. It really is the next day. I'm not just saying this. Uh, these have been in the fridge all night. They're cold. So what I'm gonna do is turn on the heat, medium high-ish. I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer. I'm also going to take some beef stock. You can also use chicken stock, uh, but beef stock is preferred. We're gonna bring, we're gonna cover just to about the shoulders of the meat. Right there. Once this comes up to a simmer, we're gonna put the lid back on and we're gonna put it into a 375 degree oven for two to three hours. So at about the two hour mark, I'll start checking on it, but these are gonna be just like falling apart. Um, for the last 30 minutes or so, I like to flip them meat side up um, and make sure that it's sticking out of the, out of the braising liquid and really, um, and take the top off so that they get a nice crust back from the top of this. So that's the plan. Okay, we're simmering. So I'm gonna put the lid back on, into the oven, 375. So while the short ribs finish up, I'm going to roast off some diced portobellos in the oven uh, with balsamic, garlic, and butter. And then I'm going to make some quick mashed potatoes. I might do a real quick highlight as you'll see of these, but I'm not gonna cover every step. Uh, then we will be pretty much there. So these are done. They're deeply golden, caramelized, dark. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you can tell, they probably just look burnt to you. They're not burnt at all. It's just the deep red wine. Uh, but these things, I could like just pull the whole thing apart, like just squeeze through it if I wanted to. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna set these aside. So the next thing we're gonna do is strain this into another bowl uh, to get everything out of, out of the braising liquids. We're done with all of that gonna put it into another pot and then I'm gonna reduce it. I'm gonna turn it on and simmer it until it reduces by about half so it's really, really rich and syrupy and delicious. And then at that point, we can just put our ribs back in and let them sit and hang out 
until we're ready to serve them. That's a good thing about braised short ribs is once you cook them, you can hold them uh, and you know keep them warm or even in the fridge and warm them up whenever you're ready to eat them. Um, so you can do this well ahead of time if you would like. There's actually one more step. So a lot of fat came out of uh, the short ribs because there's a lot of fat in them. And I want to get rid of a good amount of that. I just want to be left with the braising wine and stock mixture. So if you have a fat separator, which is like a measuring cup almost that has a spout at the bottom, um, you can use that. I don't, I'm going to show you this little trick that I do, which is, I didn't make it up, but it's a great solution for separating fat. So if you get a Ziploc bag, you gotta let it settle. And you can kind of see it. There's a line right here of fat, and then from here on down is all of the braising liquid. So what you do once this settles is put this over a bowl and we're gonna snip the bottom. It's gonna immediately start running out. And then right when it gets to the fat, I'm gonna pinch it and move it to the sink and throw it away or the trash. So here we go. There we go. So that's all the fat. I'm gonna throw that out. And now all that we have here is braising liquid that we're gonna reduce by about half. Okay, so this is reduced by about half. It's really, really deeply meaty. It's deeply flavorful. It's also very salty. So. Uh, because it's as salty as it is, I don't want to keep reducing it. Otherwise it's just going to keep concentrating that salt flavor. So I do want this to be a bit more syrupy than it is. So what I'm going to do is make a cornstarch slurry. So you take cornstarch for this amount. We'll do like a teaspoon or so, maybe a teaspoon and a half. Then you take a little bit of this mixture. All right, so from there, we're gonna pour it back in. Then we're gonna bring it back up to a boil. And this time, once it comes to a boil, it's gonna really thicken up. That cornstarch is gonna be activated and it'll be a really glazy, syrupy sauce. All right, real quick, brought it up to a boil and it is now a syrupy, exactly the consistency that we want. So just for a cleaner presentation, I'm going to take the ones that are still on the bone and just slice them right off. I mean, look, this is like, just completely, I could shake it apart. That's the amazing part about braised short ribs. Gonna put my ribs back in there and let those hang out until we're ready to serve. Whoa, there it is. This is such a deeply rich dish. Like it's almost hard to take a picture of cause it's so lacquered in this deep, rich braising sauce. Um, let me try to show you like, it just literally pulls apart. I mean, it's just like fall apart brisket. Do you see that? <laughs> Oh my gosh. If you make this for people, they will lose their minds. I mean, this is like, this will hold up to any restaurant any day. I really hope you try it. And thank you so much for watching all these videos. Like I said at the top, I'm gonna continue to do them, but at a much slower pace, um, at a pace that I enjoy. But I really appreciate all of your views. And a huge, huge shout out to one of my oldest, dearest friends, Jared Tomasino, for all of the amazing tunes that have been on this video and many, many other videos all year. 
Uh, he set up a Dropbox and just kind of trickles in new music as he puts it in there. Extremely talented guy. I mean, we've been playing music together since high school. Jared, this one's for you. Bray Short Ribs. Next time I see you, I will cook these for you. I love you. And I love you, everyone else, all you viewers. Love all around. Mm, I love this dish. Thank you. See you next time.